Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Mary presents Challenging Addictions, filmed on the 31st of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. This is part one. How are you guys all going? Still fired up? It's been a lot of content today. <laughs> um, I'm going to present to you some information about challenging addictions. What I want to do with this talk is give you some tools and help you to try to understand a little bit the process that you're going to have to go through to properly release an addiction. Properly release this addiction that's driving many things in your life, whatever that addiction is. A lot of you by now have intellectual awareness of, the, of this whole cycle, really, don't you? You know, you have a lot of intellectual awareness. And hopefully what I'm going to talk about today is some tools to help you shift from intellectual awareness into emotional awareness and growth. Oh, look, someone's come to join us. G'day, mate. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yep. So the first reminder I want to make before I begin is that the deconstruction process that Jesus described for you guys yesterday, from having intellectual awareness, intellectual desire to find out what this injury is all about, so in this case with the addictions, have an intellectual awareness of the addiction, an intellectual desire to discover what's driving it, and to have an intellectual idea maybe of what it is, you're still going to have to go through that process with all of your addictions, almost all of them, before you move into this emotional awareness and then emotional change. What I'm going to talk to you about is the steps after you have the emotional awareness and the emotional inkling of what it's about. So this is hopefully the next step for a lot of you guys. Sound all right? Okay, I'll just skip through that. So before I start, I want to talk to you just about my journey with what I'm about to present to you. What I'm going to describe is the process of beginning to take personal responsibility for your addictions. And that is, ah, I have an addiction and it's my responsibility to deal with it. It's you going, oh, I feel a compulsion, or I feel an addiction just got met, or I feel it didn't get met, and I'm going to do something different. It's you deciding for yourself and undertaking that process personally. Now, what happened for me in the beginning of my journey of rediscovery with divine truth was that I had a lot of external challenges to my addictions. Moving in with Jesus does that. So, and do you remember the other day when I was talking about the will to love? And I did that practical demonstration with Cornelius where I was holding the weight and he was lifting it for me. When, some, when you have an addiction in play and somebody and your circumstances are challenging it continually, you might do a little bit of emotional work, but you aren't lifting the weight yourself. The external circumstances are. So you're not really growing your will to change and grow and to love. Does that make sense? So that was me for a long, long time. And that was because of three main factors. Because, I mean, it's pretty surprising, isn't it? I'm Mary Magdalene. I love hearing about God's truth. I love all this stuff. I'm passionate about it. And yet I really wasn't exercising my will to love very much. Only until recently have I begun to engage the process that I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So there was three major things stopping me from engaging this practical and emotional challenge of addictions, taking personal responsibility for it. Does anyone have any idea what those three things might be? Or one of them, yeah, Kel? Well, 
one at least, um, wanting somebody else to do it for me. I did want someone else to do it for me. That's right. Why did I want someone else to do it for me? There was I, some. I haven't engaged my will. That's right. So if let's think back to Cornelius's talk on the first day. It was about the desire for personal change, or the fear of personal change, really, wasn't it? And what were three major things that he outlined that prevent us actually desiring to change for ourselves? Kati? Thank you. Uh, was one of them faith in God? Yep, so a lack of faith. Lack of faith in God. A lack of faith in God, yes. Anto? Like in faith in myself to do it. Yes. Yeah. So these were big factors for me. Because of the injuries that I have in this incarnation, I had zero faith in my capacity to change and grow. I didn't I loved the idea of God and I I felt this I felt like it I know it's true, but I don't believe it from a soul perspective anymore. I don't have faith that this thing that I can change. So do I really want to challenge my addictions? This is the only place where I feel like I'm getting any happiness or fulfilment in my life, which if you think about Jesus' discussion with Justin just now, that's really what he identified, wasn't it? The only times he was feeling good was when his addictions were getting met. So if I acknowledge that, wow, no, this is the only thing I consider good in my life is when my addictions are met. And I don't have any faith that I can even change. There's no incentive, is there? What was the second thing that Cornelius talked about? Lorraine? Uh, resistance to truth. That was the third thing he mentioned. Who um, can tell me the second line? Lani, um, allowing the overwhelm of emotion. So a terror of being emotionally overwhelmed. That was certainly me. I, I have big, intense emotions and I was trained from very young in this incarnation that I didn't have to feel them. That in fact, it was okay and we'd hug it out and you don't ever have to feel that distressed or upset or sad or lonely or anything. So I was terrified of being emotionally overwhelmed. And this prevented a desire to challenge my addictions because guess what? When we challenge our addictions, there's going to be some emotions involved. And what was the third thing? Lorleen mentioned it already, a resistance to truth. Now, I did have this on my side in that I do have a love for truth. It did pull me through a lot of stuff, <laughs> this seeking feeling inside of me of wanting truth. But I had to work through resistance to it as well. You know, I didn't just waltz on into Jesus' life and go, just tell me everything I really want to know all about myself and everything that's going on. I had resistance to it. I had fear about it. But it was the thing that pulled me through a lot of stuff, this feeling that when it all came down to it, no, I, I value the truth. I want the truth. I want to know what is real and what is not. And if that means facing some hard stuff about myself, well, I might fight that for a long time, but in the end, I'm going to face it. So I'm telling you guys this stuff because this is work that you will have to do as well. I don't believe it's possible for us to truly embrace soul changes while we're carrying around a huge feeling of a lack of faith, a terror of emotional overwhelm, and a resistance to truth. We're just not going to be motivated. So what did I do to resolve these issues? Karina? Um, you exercised your will. I did exercise my will, but I had to do some other things in, involved in that. Glennis? Grow your faith on a daily basis. And how do you reckon I did that? I'm not sure. I've yeah. been thinking about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good question, isn't it, Marco? Let's let's try to answer the question: How do you grow your faith? Is that you, is that what you can? Yep. 
things. Educate yourself. Educate. Love. Educate. Mm. You know, I was doing a lot of those things through this engagement with truth. So my desire for truth was, was bringing me a lot of knowledge and education. But it was a lot intellectual because remember, I don't want to be overwhelmed emotionally. Justin? Just give it a go and see what happens. <laughs> Do you know what I did, Justin? I gave it a go, especially in the area of challenging addictions. And baby, I didn't grow any will, will muscle, but I grew a lot of the willpower muscle. I have a steely resolve. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to prevent. And I went through, actually, some of the feelings that you are now starting, that are starting to be, you're becoming more conscious of. I felt miserable. Because I went, nah, I want this truth, and I can see its truth. So I'm going to use willpower, I'm not going to have my addictions, and I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to do it. And this feeling came up for me. And it's a feeling that some of you are faced with at the moment. My lack of faith, my hopelessness, my feeling that there is no good, that nothing will work out in the end, it's all terrible, began to be exposed. And I had to grieve about that. My honour of truth continued to expose these feelings. And the fear of emotional overwhelm, gee, did that come up. And I began to grieve those things, Seth. Is that part of you feeling that you can't do it? Yes, the lack of faith in God and the lack of faith in myself. I, there have been so many times when I have, and I wish I could remember if it's in the Muppets or Sesame Street, but there's a scene where there's this, this puppet trying to play the piano. And he just gets so frustrated, he ends up bashing his head on the piano, just going, I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to get it. And I've felt that feeling very many times. And I've had to let myself feel it, guys. You know, this lack of faith in ourselves has been with us pretty much since the incarnation because our parents had it in them, you know. So this... This is what I want to encourage you towards. Like the, the, it's a very powerful talk that Cornelius gave to you on that first day with these three major factors. If you can grow your desire for truth and allow the feelings of a lack of faith to overwhelm you, then progress becomes possible towards what I'm about to talk to you about. Pierre? How long did it take to you to go through your lack of faith? And I ask that because I felt some lack of faith a few days ago and I had a big overwhelming process, but it was short and probably not enough at all, but to have an idea of what it requires to go through this one. Only. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Can I put the three up there? So. Um So my resistance to, let's just call it emotions, but by that I mean emotional overwhelm. So I, to work, I couldn't work through one in isolation, really, because in order to allow the overwhelm of the lack of faith, you know, I had to work through the fear of being emotionally overwhelmed. So you ready for how long that took me, guys? Five years. Maybe by my fourth year, things were getting a bit easier. But really, five years. It's my continual engagement with truth every single day. Living with someone who exposed the truth to me through an external source every single day. And you know, I had to want that truth because it was very challenging. 
I was dealing with an extreme lack of faith and an extreme desire not to be overwhelmed. And I did run away heaps of times. But then, desire for truth brought me back. Linda? Uh, Linda, so Mary, how do you know when you're feeling those feelings of overwhelm and despair that they're actually your feelings, that you're in the truth of those feelings and not being overridden by spirit influence? Well, it just feels very personal. <laughs> like, it, I suppose I was facing truth at those times. So this desire for truth helped me stay in that process. Um, and I, I just, I suppose this is something where when you do want to cry addictively, when you want to feel like you're progressing by crying, it's, you leave yourself wide open for spirit influence when you're in an addiction with that. Um, but I suppose I didn't have that many addictions with that and I'd done enough work through those five years to feel the difference as well. But that again, it's between, when I say the difference, between feeling a spirit's emotions and feeling my own. So, so is it like a feeling that's, you know, really deep inside of you as opposed to more an intellectual experience? Definitely. Yeah. It's an overwhelming yeah. experience of hopelessness. Yeah. yeah. But it's not angry. No. It's not angry. And I know some of you cry in this hopeless, they, you call it hopeless, but it's really angry about not getting your addictions met. So it's a very childlike kind of hopelessness, isn't it? Like despairing and... Yeah, is that, I, is that right? Yes, it was yeah. not intellectual at all. Yeah. It's the feeling that comes from deep inside that there is that you have no faith in your capacity to change or in good or, yeah. yeah. I suppose I'm not. I don't really understand the confusion. I think the only way I can understand it is that perhaps you're referring to an angry, hopeless feeling because spirits would definitely get involved with that. But when you're really feeling this feeling of a lack of faith, mm. it's your own feeling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jesus, would you like to add to that at all? Um, yes, I, I feel that a lot of people are still worried about having feelings and so they ask questions about their worry about having feelings. If you truly engage your feelings, you will soon be able to determine when you're being influenced in a feeling and when it's actually your feeling. Mm. But, but see, most people don't engage their feelings first. So what they do is they want to intellectually know, is this a spirit or is this me, before they engage a feeling. And of course, at that point, you're never going to know because you're not engaging the feeling yet. So no. it's all, everything's back to front. Like you're trying to, you know, like many of your questions are about like engaging thoughts first before you have a feeling. That's not the way feelings are. You, you, you really, when you really feel a feeling, you don't have any thoughts about it, really. You just engage the feeling completely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, but that, but this fear, this questioning, is all about a fear of emotionally being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. Linda's question is really about her fear about being emotionally overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions before I move on? Anto. Mary, when you said you um, honour the truth in that moment, is it honouring the truth of that there's lack of um, faith or yes. just on that issue? Yeah, or I, I was... Conf I See, what a lot of us do in our personal lives is that we are living in a lot of addiction and we're comfortable allowing ourselves to see parts of it but not all of it. Mm. Or we don't really... We want to tell ourselves a bit of a story about our true motivations that, that aren't true. Yeah. <laughs> what we, what we want to say, oh, no, really, I wasn't angry. I was just, you know, feeling like uninterested or whatever. If you are confronting the truth, so often, again, this came externally to me, someone saying, no, you're really angry right now. <laughs> 
And I could have fought that, and I did initially, I fought that a lot. But I got to a point where I was willing to face the truth of that and go, yeah, I am. So emotionally acknowledge, yeah, I am. And that triggered my lack of faith because then I was like, man, <laughs> I'm a really angry person. And I don't, and all of a sudden, oh, but I don't have any faith that I can change that. Overwhelmed me. When I'm just going, oh, no, I'm just a bit bored and disinterested, I'm not facing any truth and my lack of faith in my own capacity to change or my feeling of hopelessness, if you like, about my current soul condition is avoided. So I'm honouring the truth about my life, about my feelings, about what's really going on for me. And then because I don't have any faith in my capacity to change or that God loves me, I feel desolate. And that overwhelms me. Does that make sense? And then, yes, I couldn't deny the lack of faith feeling of the truth of it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And this is powerful, guys, and this is why the other two guys, Cornelius and Jesus today, have been talking to you a lot about facing truth about yourself. You know, the resistance to truth that we feel in the audience, that's showing that you are really resisting emotional overwhelm and your feelings of a lack of faith. You don't want to know the truth even enough to expose those feelings inside of you. And a lot of you, when truth is being presented to you here in the audience, it, ooh, it, there's error that's being challenged by the truth. And some of you, instead of feeling overwhelmed, choose to project back out at us. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I'm a bit confused. Oh, oh no. Hang on. You know, these kinds of feelings. And that's showing that you're resisting truth. And this truth has power, guys. This is the only way I changed, was wanting truth about myself because that helped me through these other two massive, massive, massive blocks. Like when I'm saying I had a lack of faith, I'm not saying like a little bit. <laughs> it's a big lack of faith and it's actually something that I'm still working through, the feeling of hopelessness and, you know, fear about the future because I lack confidence in my own capacity to change. But this desire for truth is what's helping me through these things and growing my soul in this its ability, its, it's um, willingness to be overwhelmed and to stretch. Does that make sense? So I know it seems a bit scary that I said it took me five years, but I feel they were years well spent. <laughs> I had a huge resistance to truth especially personal truth. And now, just got a little one. <laughs> and that's liberating because it's, it's helped me, like, not fear truth as much. It's helped me have a lot more softness and compassion. It's helped me to begin to challenge addictions emotionally and to get to my hurt self. Like, I'm saying it was five years of hard yakka, and in the last year, wow, so much has changed for me in a very beautiful way. So that's why I wanted to introduce this talk and tell you a bit about my journey because some of you I've known for that length of time but I still see you resisting this truth and resisting these feelings. Some of you are better with emotional overwhelm than I was but you really resist the truth. You're going to have to work on all three of these things. Make sense? Okay. Oh, I keep forgetting I've got a PowerPoint and I don't actually have to write on the board. 